Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition, August 25th, 2019. And what a great last week it was with all them tweets. And Miss Vegas is going to give us our watch list and discuss other things. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. What a tweeting Friday it was. And as we can see, a lot of action happening. But I'm going to give you the list we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about... Apple, Boeing, Tesla, HEBT, Teleria, Roku, and GDX. So I just want to talk about briefly about these tweets. You know, Trump is definitely not having second thoughts on the China trade war. Um, he basically, you know, retaliated with a response on Friday after hours. I mean, there was tweets going on all afternoon. And, you know, at the end of the day, you just have to trade what is the action that you see and sometimes certain stocks are not affected by by the tweets and then there are lots that are so you just gotta just trade what works based on market conditions so on that note we will get started and talk about our first one which is apple so we just talked about you know the, these tweets that are coming out and you know apple as you know makes a lot of their products obviously all in china and i am jim's going to show you guys an article but as you can see you know apple is really aggressively looking to shift their supply chain away from china as a result of the tensions according to one of the analysts and uh those of you may not know but not this past friday but the week before uh trump and uh tim cook the president of apple had dinner together and they had a very in-depth conversation so not too sure with the details obviously there were some you know discussions around the tariffs but as we can see you know apple is one of the chip stocks that had some significant exposure to china it took a substantial hit there was a bit of a market sell-off you have to remember people could be on the stock and they've made money on it and they're just basically trimming down the position because they just don't want to lose money at this time. Um, and we could see also that the Dow Jones was down. And, um, you know, Apple is going to be looking to aggressively look for alternative options within their supply chain with regards to the, you know, U.S.-China trade battle. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim now to talk to us about the Apple chart because we could definitely see that there was a pullback. And, you know, not, it doesn't mean that Apple's a crappy company. Uh, it's just a reaction to what's going on in the market. So I'll just turn it over to Mr. Picasso, and he'll talk to us about what's happening with Apple. Jim, over to you. We definitely had a pullback on Apple Friday as it tried to rear up to a, to a resistance level that we had here at, well, and this is a year chart on the day around 214.39, I think, somewhere right around there. Then she went ahead and pulled back a pretty good lot. So we're going to pull up the 20 day. I think it can. I mean, if it wants to pull back more, it can pull back to this 200 EMA right here at 193.13. But let's pull up the 20 day and kind of look where we are. There's 187 on the 20 day chart. We did have a low. It had a pretty hard sell off back here on, on uh, 8 1 all the way back to July 1, all the way back to, or August 1, all the way back to this day here, which was on the 5th. So it had a pretty good sell-off from 216 all the way to 187. And ever since then, she's kind of bounced up, broke that 20-day support Friday, 200-day support Friday on the 20-day one-hour chart. And then she kind of hit a bottom right around 200 and bounced up dollar eighty. So we're going to pull up the daily one minute now. I'm going to see if I can find a couple trend lines in here for resistance. I see a good one right there at 204.68. Another one right here at 203.46. Another one at 201.34. Then we had that 234 right below it. So let's pull this back to the 20 day one more time. Pretty solid support down here right at 199.20. So these are going to be our three support levels. If it pulls back a little bit more, i got a 199.20. Let's see if we can pull this up on a five-day or ten-day. Get a better look at it. 
yeah there we go so your third support is going to be right down here right around one I'd say probably 198 198 197 to 80 somewhere right around there your second support is going to be right here at 199.20 and then that first one's going to be right here at 234 right now we're at 201.80 and if it wants to rebound she can bounce up to these other three resistances that we're going to have and I think it'll probably consolidate maybe one more day of pullback and then maybe bounce on up so we're going to have to see what Monday detects if Monday morning it starts to bounce up we could reverse the play and if it starts to go on down you can always tell by the first 15 minutes of the opening trading hour right when the bell rings which way it's going to go and which direction you're going to go and that's probably the way you want to play your calls or your op or your your option plays your puts or even as as a day trade but that's going to determine that first 15 minutes which way this stock's going to go we'll be watching it for sure so the low support's going to be right around here at 190 197.84 somewhere then we got 199.20 then 234 for your first support the pivot points right in this channel right here between 201 and 203.46 and then the three resistances past that are going to be the 204.68, 206.81, then that 208.05. I don't think we're going to see that 208.05, but if she starts to move up, that would be your third resistance maybe to go ahead. We did have an ascending triangle back here on this day here, and it gapped on up pre-market. So, but right now, we're kind of just having a standstill with a double bottom right here at 201.34. That's going to be Apple. Keep a good watch on it. First 15 minutes of the day, I always say, is how you're gonna play the day out and it usually ends up like that then you keep the eye on the Dow and on the spy and see what direction they go in you know if they keep going and holding steady at like two or three hundred in the hole and not moving back up to the flat part of the market then you know that it, you don't want to be trying to take too much risk if it decides to go ahead and correct itself that's when you want to start playing the rebounds the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Boeing, and we had a great trade on Boeing Friday. Oh, what a great oh trade in the option God. land. The whole room benefited <laughs> last week in Boeing. My goodness. You know what? One of the best trades we've had in Boeing in a while. I mean, I mentioned that we did have a... Okay, so, you know, with regards to Boeing, uh, we had a fantastic option call we gave on Thursday because I was looking at Boeing and we were saying it's pretty bullish and we had an amazing $400 option trade, $400 strike for September 20. And believe it or not, those were going for 28 cents and we scooped those up. And I was really shocked. I will say I was expecting them to move, you know, maybe towards 50, 60 cents um, in the next little while. But I was shocked come Friday morning those contracts went all the way up to 204 unbelievable and i'm gonna let jim talk about boeing because you know he was in an option trade too but before he talks about his trade you know there was some news uh with the pentagon that the department of defense was scrapping their redesign of the ballistic missile interceptors they basically canceled the program that could have been worth more than five billion dollars uh, apparently this was on hold back in may pending a review and apparently they did not like the conclusions from the review so now they've officially abandoned this project but at the same time i saw some news that boeing got a 999 million dollar contract to produce the wings for the a10 warthog they said that they beat out an unnamed company and they're going to be basically uh making these uh wings for planes that are going to fly into the early 2030s this is a big project. Um, they will be, they've been awarded initially for uh, $240 million, which will be for 27 wing sets. But the contract is worth $999 million if everything that's executed for the wing assemblies is enough to continue with the rebalance of the contract. So it is very, uh, they, they believe it's a small contract compared to the multi billions they get. Um, but this could mean that this is a sign that the Air Force is restoring confidence in the company's ability to produce these A-10 wings on schedule 
and also at a nice cost. And that was comments as well from um, one of the vice presidents of the Air Force Services for Boeing, Ms. Pam Valdez. So, Jimmy, what are your thoughts on Boeing? And tell us maybe a little bit about your Boeing trading experience, because that was amazing. Yep. Well, on Boeing itself, I got into an option trade on it Friday, and I'm new. I'm fairly new. I've just started trading options here last month or two, really doing it one or two days a week. And I got into the Boeing option uh, August 23rd at 370 strike at 13 cents and sold it at 49 and 50 cents. Made almost had 20 contracts and made almost $800 on it. So I was pretty excited. But at first I got in the trade at 34 and I went to go buy some more at 17 and actually I hit the sell button and I sold them instead of bought them. So I was down. Uh, a good hundred and some percent on it so I had to gain back that plus more so it was kind of a mistake that I did at the beginning which I'm not going to do again because I get a little sometimes get excited but I pushed the wrong button and I ended up selling what I wanted to buy but I actually got it cheaper so I made back my money plus and that was Boeing and then here's the Boeing chart and I'm still bullish on the stock we, we were kind of questioned about it uh, Thursday you know I said no we're gonna go up for another day and we did pretty much right up from out of the gate you can tell on this 10 day chart here and I'm gonna change it to a 20 but we did break out and we just all got in that trade and we sold it when I said time it was time to sell and that was right around 367 it did run up to 369.69 but I use that base as more of a more of a guide stone for me instead of uh, using the wicks because they, they're more strength behind the, the button but right now we have a descending triangle so maybe this might start pulling back a little bit but I'm going to be looking for a reversal and I think support level is going to be right here I'd hate to see it go any lower than the 351.28 and that's kind of what I said to someone on stock twits I said we're just getting that support this thing was way oversold to begin with on this 10 day chart when it was down here at 316, 317. I say this is a bargain for this company right now. Even with all the bad news, it's kind of settled a little bit. And then they talked about restoring what the, getting them back on the track again. So you never know what's going to go on. But so we're going to pull up the, I want to pull up the one day, one hour. There's your 351.28. It's going to be your low support. Your second support is going to be right down here, right around 352.84. And then that first one's going to be at 354.15. It can pull back to that 354 something. Actually, it could be a little bit higher as I see this here, a little spot right here on the chart, right around 354.40. So chalk that down. This little space right in here should be your first support. Pivot point is going to be that area between 355.71 and 356.23. Then you got your second resistance up here, or your first resistance up here at 358.39 and 358.96. Anything above that's going to be a gift for right now until, you know, a Trump tweet could bring this down, a Trump tweet could bring it up, and that's the same thing with a spy. So pay closely attention. You know, we have a little link in our room that talks about the Trump tweets, and we're able to watch them as they go through. Plus, you know, our friend George from Trade, is it Trade Exchange, Miss yes. Vegas, uh, also yeah. brings up the Trump tweets. So he keeps us pr much, pretty much on toes about that. The next resistance, um. next resistance is going to be right around this area right in here. And I'm thinking around 361.38, probably going to be your third resistance to that 362.73. So your low support, we don't want it to go any lower than 351.28. If it does, it could sink more, but I think that'll hold. Your second support's at 352.82, 84, and then that first channel of support is going to be right here at the 354.15 to 354.40, somewhere in that area. And your pivot point, like I said, 355.71, 356.23, and 396, your second resistance, and then that third one's going to be this channel right up in here. 
So you're willing to stop these video at any time and write these numbers down, copy and paste them for your own personal reference, but please don't share them. And I just heard some thunder outside, so we've got a storm coming in. And that's Boeing, BA. The next one we're going to speak about is going to be Tesla. Tesla's in yeah. big trouble. Yeah, it sure is. And, you know, we could definitely see that in the stock behavior. I mean, it's definitely gapped down. It's got definitely some weakness. I just wanted to just mention, you know, that Tesla is definitely scouting out locations in Germany. And um, they did mention that. And they apparently have been inspecting this. Um, they haven't really confirmed that. I mean, back in April, Elon did tweet that they're considering to build a factory in Germany. But we are waiting to hear the official news. But apparently the latest is that they were seen scouting a, a location recent, in the last couple of days. So not surprised, especially with all the China trade war stuff happening. Can't hear me, Jim? Yep, now we can. Go ahead. Oh. Want to start again? No, we're, we're recording. Oh, where did you, where did you, where did I leave off there? I was just talking about Tesla. Tesla in Germany. Yeah, just saying that they were apparently scouting sites in Germany. And that's the latest. I mean, it's not, not a shocker with everything going on with the trade war. Um, Elon Musk did mention back in April that the company was considering building a factory. But um, apparently, I think they're taking it a little more serious and uh, looking for a location out there. So uh, keep a watch on that. Um, but yeah, the stock's pulled back. And um, what are your thoughts, Jim? Do you think it'll bounce back anytime soon? Well, I've, I said in the room that 210 was going to be a critical level for, for it to turn either way. And with the news about Walmart soon wanting to suit Tesla over their so solar panels and some other company wanting to do the same thing, I think that's what kind of brought the stock down from the ties when it was up there at 246. So we're down here down 30, $35 in a matter of 20 days on Tesla. And I'm going to pull up the chart and show you what I'm talking about on the 20 day chart. We had that 246.68, and then she's had a couple real bad days where she just pulled on back pretty deep steps. And I was calling this out Friday, and I said, if we get down here to this 210 area, that's going to be a very important pivot point for it to turn either go back up or pull back down to that $200 area we did hit that 210 after hours so I'm going to pull up the daily one minute and actually pull it back to 209.75 so this is going to be another one that I'm going to be watching right out of the gate come Monday morning I want to see if it wants to move up or wants to pull back and that's going to be how I'm going to play this stock I'll either play the, the calls on it if it decides to start moving up or I'll play the puts on it if it starts to move down because if it breaks that 210 or that 209.75 it could drop more so let's go back to the 20, 20 day here real fast we got a little resistance level right there at 212.35 we got another resistance level right here at 215.55 and then your third one's going to be right around this 217.92 area I actually want to bring it up just a little bit. I'm going to bring it up to right about 218.89. Now we'll go with the 218.15 area. I'll just stick with that. So we're going to pull up a three month daily chart. And I've got supports on this already on the three month daily. I don't want to see go no lower than that 204.63 area. It can go down to 201.93. But that 204.63 is going to be a very important, another important uh, pullback support area. With the next one at 209.20. And then let's go ahead and pull this back up to the one day. One minute. And the three resistance levels are going to be the 212.35, the 215.55, and then that 218.15. That's going to be Tesla. So, you know, like I said, that first 15 minutes determines which way I think the stock's going to trade, if it's either going to go down or if it's going to go up. The next one we talked about many times, and it's called TLRA. Okay, well, Telleria. 
You know, we have talked about this stock for a long time. And we've talked about this when it was down to under $5. And you guys know that this company makes all these different apps. They're in the telecommunications industry. They're in the digital video advertising. They buy and sell platforms that help people do transactions in a video marketplace. And um, the company's been around since 2005, and they're located in New York. Well, you know what? This is just amazing. Um, the growth I've seen on this stock, and you guys have been hearing us talk about this all year long. And shockingly, but not shockingly, this finally hit $10 on Friday. So... You should be watching this as a continuation. It didn't break the pen, but please keep an eye on it so that you could see if it actually has a move. Jim, let's hear about Telleria. She did say it was going to go to 10. I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but we did hit that. And even we've got a double top right now at that $10 level after hours. It jumped all the way from, oh, it closed it. 953 and then we got a little green dot up here at 998 so if we break this 10 we're going to have new buyers come in so let's call the resistance level at 998 for right now not that ten dollar area let's bring it back a couple pennies and i'm trying to find a couple supports i did have a 965 that i really liked right here but we can hit that previous high that we had we have like three different areas maybe four right down here at this I'm gonna call it right there at the 947 so if it decides to knife it can pull back to that 947 that's going to be your, probably your third support area I'm gonna draw that into a red line your second support which you know we don't know how this thing's going to open up when the bell rings but for right now the pivot point in this channel is going to be right here at 947 and you're going to have these other supports if we open up it when the bell rings at 988 which you know you'll probably have some kind of pre-market action on this and I do believe it'll pull back we could pull back to that 947 the 965 or this 980 area to 989 the resistance we need to break is going to be that ten dollars if new buyers come in We'll just kind of go like 1025. Let me look at the three year chart because I think we are at a three year high. Yeah, that's a beautiful three year chart, too. You know, back in 2016, we were down here at 145. Then you've got a little kind of consolidated area right in here in this channel. And then in 2019, she's done nothing but break out and run up to that $10 mark. So let's pull this back again to that. 20 day take a good look at it yeah I mean it can pull back to this area here too at 934 but let's stick with this 947 for right now see if that holds that's going to be your bottom line support level anything below that the momentum and the price action is still with it it's still going to be a good strong buy resistance we got a break is going to be this double top here at 10 bucks you can see after hours we are at 998 so this is going to be a double top breakout or it's going to pull back to support and you've got a little 1052 right here 952 too so between 947 and 952 it should pull back yeah I've seen this little wick right over in here that could be a nice little support level on it also that 955 9, 950 something so that's TLRA and I'm going to pull this back one more time to the one minute daily we've got the 947 for your low support don't want to go any lower than that you've got the 965 for your second and this 980 to 989 for your first support levels resistance we've got a break is going to be that ten dollars and new buyers might be coming into this trade and this could be a runner far as we know it could run up higher if it gets the momentum and the next one we're going to talk about is TLRA the next one we're going to talk about is a little penny stock, H-E-B-T. Yes, and you know what? This is Hebron Technology. At first, I, I, go, I was trying to remember that, you know, this stock, I've been watching this and I kept my, took my eyes off it. But this company's in China. 
they do the manufacturing and installation of valves and pipe fittings. They the, primarily in the biological food, beverage, and cleaning industry. So, you know, when you go to the, um, <coughs> excuse me, public facilities or you're in your workplace and you have those sanitary liquid pumps that um, to wash your hands, I mean, they provide a lot of that stuff. Um, and they do other things too. So they're located in Wenzhou, China. But the reason I like it, new 52-week highs. And I mean, this is not done. This looks like there's going to be a continuation here on um, this particular stock. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see the break of $3. And this could go easily to $320, $350, maybe fours and more. So I'm going to let Jim talk about this one, but this has got a beautiful, beautiful chart and on a beautiful new uptrend. All right. So let's, this is HEBT. We're going to pull up the yearly chart. That's what I like to do best. You know, I always analyze the news, see what kind of stock we're getting into. This is a China play, so, you know, you have to kind of put a 50-50 chance on it. But look at this run on it's had. All the way down here from a low support of right around 81 cents with a year low at 50, all the way up to 299, almost 302 Friday. We've had last week was just a beautiful day for the last week was a beautiful week for this stock. It bounced all the way off that support level of right around the 208 area and ran all the way to 299, so that's a 91 cent play just in four days. So support levels, so I'm going to put a little trend line right in here. We're going to pull up the 20 day now. Look at the 20 day. I see a support level right down here. There's a double top area right down here that it had before that last week's breakout at 230. So if it knives down that far, that's going to be a real strong buy. You've got your third support right here at 250. Your first, one, your second one's going to be right here at 365, and then your first support at 285. The resistance we got a break is going to be that triple top up here, right around the 299 area. It is setting up for a triple top breakout. And let's see if this pull up a year, three year chart on this. We can go a lot higher on this trade if she decides to pick up momentum. We've got that 321 right in here, 324. Yeah, let's get it right there, 324. Your next resistance, and then the one after that is going to be right in here, right around 345. And then you got another resistance. Break round for 369 area, 369, 377. So let's pull up the daily one minute. Make them tell us much there. We'll go to the 20 day. So we got a triple top breakout we got to meet. And that's going to be right here at the 299 area. Support levels again, I'm going to give them to you. It's going to be this 250, 230 strong buy. If it decides to pull back to that, you definitely will get a dead cat bounce off that 230. 250 is your third, 265, and then 285 for your first. And let's pull up the uh, yearly. Next resistance is going to be that 324. And then one right after that is 345 and 369. Still more room to run up if she decides to. But, you know, it depends on how the market is and how the China plays are. This is a China play. And the next one we're going to be talking about is going to be Roku. Okay, Roku. Well, you know what? This is one to watch. This had a new 52-week high amidst all the chaos in the market. Um, it had a, 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 you know, a new 52-week high. It pulled back a little bit, but still made that 52-week high. And, you know, with Disney coming with the Disney Channel launching Disney+, Plus, you know, Roku did expand their programming for children. Um, they never had it before, and they are now expanding into programming for children. So I think they're getting ready to definitely compete with Disney. Um, they're looking to have family movies and they're looking to have um, subscriptions for children in the kid family section. They're also introducing parental controls so that you as the parents can obviously monitor what your kids can watch when accessing Roku TV. Um, also, um, they're also gonna have a, a lot of, um, you know, original content. 
they're going to have like some free content and then they're going to have digital creators where you can actually subscribe to some paid content, but they will be offering 7,000 free um, episodes of different um, children's, uh, um, I guess, shows. They're going to have like Happy Kids TV. They're going to have Mattel, Moonbug, The Pocket Watch. I mean, they're going to have so many things like Cat in the Hat. I love Cat in the Hat. They're going to have Super Mario Brothers. I mean, they're going to have everything in here. So this is, you know, I think Roku is one to not ignore, even though it made the highs and pulled back a little. Roku, to me, is still going to be extremely competitive and one to not ignore and keep on your watch list for this to keep going higher and higher. Jim, I want to hear what you think about Roku because this is one to not ignore. Yeah, I mean, you cannot ignore Roku, especially on the pullbacks. This thing is a very momentous stock. It was down here back in 2017, down here at 1575. And here we are, Friday, we had a high of 143.36. Or this is on a weekly chart on 143.36 high. So, I mean, we called this thing out when it was down here right around 50 bucks. We said this thing going to run, and it did. It broke all, all of our resistances, and then when that last forecast came out with earnings, it was just unbelievable. And she had a beautiful breakout all the way from about 95 all the way up to 143.36. So let's pull up the, the one year. You can get a better look at it on the one year daily. That ain't the one year. There's the one year. And we had a 26 dollar 30 cent low and there right now she's at 143.36 we did have a double top breakout at 140 looks like 141.95 and it did break out above that so it still has a, a good strong momentum going on up in this channel you can see you draw a trend line as it goes up and you're still looking good on it as long as it stays above that nine so let's look at the 20 day i'll get another look to try to find some support levels I say no lower, no lower. If it decides to knife, I don't think it will. It kind of did have a little pullback with a descending channel on Friday a little bit, but it did break out too to all-time highs. And the low support's going to be right down here. I do have a 127.75, but I want to expand that up right here to 128.69. That's going to be your little channel of your third support maybe your low support when i say low that's not counting like a third support low is mean low strong buy third support is going to be right here at 131.23 your second at 133.55 and then that first one at 135.72 is going to be a strong going to be a buy but if it pulls back and has a bad day next week no lower than the 127.75 to 128.69 and the resistance we did break the double top that I would call would be at the 14107. Someone else would probably say it was the top of the wick at 14203. But me, I'm going with the 14107 for a double top resistance breakout, and that's exactly what happened. So when we get ready to come out here Monday, if it decides to start to go up, the new resistance to break is going to be that 14250 area. Although we did have a 143.36 high, I'm going with the base of them candles right there. So let's pull it up to the daily one minute now. And it could be that 143.36 now that I look at it daily. So we've got support levels. I'm going to go back to the 20 day and give a final summary. Low support, no lower than the 127.75 if it sides to knife. Low, low. Strong buy. Third at 131.23, 133.55, with your first support right here at 135.72. Resistance that we got to break if it breaks past that 140.07 is going to be the 143.36. And that's going to be Roku. Then we got one more we're going to talk about. It's going to be how gold affects when Trump tweets or the market starts to go down or up. Miss Vegas? Definitely want to talk to you guys about GDX. So, you know, GDX is an ETF.
and uh, you can trade it both on the um, option side and also you can trade it also on the NYZ ARCA exchange. Um, so the fund ticker is called GDX. The index ticker is GDMNTR. So what I what this does, this actual ETF, it actually tracks the performance of companies that are involved in the gold mining industry. So Jim can show you like the top 10 holdings you can see there. There's a total of 44 holdings, but we're just showing you like the top 10 and you'll see that the Barrick Gold is in there, Franco Nevada Corp is in there, Kirkland and Evolution Mining. I mean, these are all companies that are in this ETF. So um, keep an eye on this because whenever the markets are pulled back, obviously we are seeing that gold and silver, another one to look at as well. Um, but those two have the most volatility when the markets are pulling back. So we've had very good success trading this on the exchange and also on the option side. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. If I do take a live trade tomorrow on this, please follow us on stock twits or on our Twitter feed. And um, you can see the live postings in real time. So that for those of you that don't are not have no time to be in a room, you could get at least alerted on this particular trade. So I'll be definitely sharing something tomorrow. So stay tuned on that so that we could definitely uh, help you guys make money. And you cannot say that small accounts cannot make good money. Jim gave a great example today of how much money he made on Friday and he put in under $300 on his option call and he was able to more than double it. Right, Jim? More than, I did more than double it. 260 there I put you... in on the, on the trade and made $800 on it. Well, there you go. So, I mean, there you go. You don't need thousands of dollars to be throwing into penny stocks. Um, you could make very good money on penny stocks as well when there's a good opportunity and there's news and a breakout. But there's a lot of great opportunities uh, with a smaller risk involved on the options side. So that's basically it for the market report. Just oh, wanted to mention Jimmy, about the GDX. Jimmy wants to talk about the chart on GDX. Oh, yeah. Let's hear about, sorry, let's hear about GDX. Jimmy? Jimmy is the other guy that sits next to me, and he's going to come on mic right now and talk about it. All right. Let's uh, hear Jimmy talk. Hello, low Jimmy. Su low support right here at 27.95. If it decides to pull back, it's going to be a strong buy. You've got a channel that we, we, we did create a triple top up here Friday. Actually, you know, you could quadruple it or even five times it because it did try to bounce up, and it, it's had lower highs when it did try to get to that top. But here we are at 29.75, and if I draw a trend line right here, it connects to every one of them tops. So that's what we're going to call it. We're going to call the breakout here at 29.76. If it decides to move up, we can go ahead and try to break the resistance level of 29.91. Instead, if it decides to not stay in this channel, the first support is going to be right down here at 28.94. That's going to be your low support. And if it goes below that, that's going to be a strong buy if it decides to pull back. If all of a sudden we start having a green week, if we start having another red week, which we, I believe that the American economy is the strongest it's ever been since I've been alive. And I also believe that the world economy is about at its weakest point since I've been alive. This recession just didn't start yesterday. For the world, it started back in about 2007 and it hasn't corrected yet in my opinion but the fat cats on wall street will tell you different but i believe that this is the strongest economy that we've seen here in america since i've actually been watching the stock market and that's been since 1979 1980 and that was back during the carter years and you know how the recession was back and then it was pretty bad and the, the one that we had in 2007 was no comparison. And I don't even think it was a recession until the government started getting involved and started, you know, doing their stuff. And then it just caused the market to crash. So we got resistance to break at 29.91. Support level, the strong buy at 
with a pivot point area right here at 2887, 2894. And that's going to be GDX, something to watch when, when the stock market's going up and down. And that's the same way with TVIX, you know. If, you're, if we're having a real bad day coming out of the gate, look at that TVIX and see where it's way it's going. You can play some good calls and puts, or you can play that one either up or down. And that's it for the report. Anything else, Miss Vegas? No, I think it's going to be an exciting week. Um, you know, tomorrow will be exciting to see what the market's going to bring to us and try to cut out all the noise. It'll be really interesting how the market's going to behave. And I guess, like, you know, like what you say and what I say is we just trade what comes, let the trade come to you. I mean, you did a great video yesterday talking about the tips for day traders and swing traders. And you really mentioned how you let the trade come to you. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So uh, we may have all these great ideas, but I want to see what happens tomorrow in the market. And uh, we'll trade what comes to us and what looks that's going to make us money because we want to make money. Yep. Please subscribe and ring that bell to our YouTube channel. We also have a Twitter page here on the website. You can hit that. Hit that follow button. We post alerts in there. We also have our stock twits. We have Miss Vegas is right here. You can hit that. Well, come on. She's acting a little slow right here. There she is. She finally pokes her head out of the window. Hit that follow button there. And also I have mine on here. You can just hit that baby right there. Twitter's acting a little slow today. There's Washboard Jim. That's what they call me. I've been called that ever since I started playing the washboard back in 1994. And then I added it on to my trading name. So I'll probably stick with that name for life. That'll be my second. Everybody knows me by Washboard Jim. And that's the aftermarket report, Sunday's edition, which is usually longer. These are stocks you want to keep on watch all week. Pay attention to them truck tweets and that'll kind of guide your way with the spy with tvix with gdx any of them vulnerable uh tickers that can play off that even you know like and we gave you a good watch list to start out next week and this is i love stocks and we love stocks have a good night everyone